Welcome to the GVSU Calculus Screencasts. In this video, we'll consider the problem of finding Taylor polynomials for functions centered at points other than zero. Now, the nth order Taylor polynomial for a function f centered at x equals a is given by this expression. And notice the difference here between the Taylor polynomial centered at a and the Taylor polynomial centered at zero. When we center our Taylor polynomial at a, we're looking at a polynomial in terms of powers of x minus a. When a is 0, we just get powers of x, but here we get powers of x minus a, and that's an important distinction to make. Now in a previous screencast, we looked at the first few Taylor polynomials centered at 0 for the function f defined by f of x equals square root of x plus 1. Now, of course, as we see with this formula for the piece of n of x centered at a, Taylor polynomials can be centered at any point, not just 0. So in this screencast, we're going to look at the Taylor polynomials of the same function, f of x equals square root of x plus 1, but this time centered at x equals 3. So our a value will be 3. And we should see as we go through this screencast that the problem is essentially the same as it was for finding Taylor polynomials centered at 0, only we have to make sure we use powers of x minus 3 instead of powers of x in our polynomials. Now we know that the first order or degree 1 Taylor polynomial for a function is just the tangent line, and we've calculated tangent lines many times. Well, let's pause the video for a moment and find the first order Taylor polynomial p sub 1 of x to this function f at x equals 3, and resume the video when you're ready. We know the tangent line, or the first order Taylor polynomial to f at x equals 3, is p sub 1 of x equals f of 3 plus f prime of 3 times x minus 3. So we just need to find f of 3 and f prime of 3 to find this Taylor polynomial. f of 3 is just the square root of 3 plus 1, which is 2. The power and chain rules give us the derivative of f of x. And so f prime of 3 in this case is just a quarter. That makes p sub 1 of x equal to 2 plus 1 quarter times x minus 3. Notice the power here of x minus 3. The Taylor polynomials for f centered at x minus 3 will be good approximations to f as long as we stay close to the base point x equals 3. And you can see by the graph of p sub 1 here and f of x that as long as we stay close to x minus 3, p sub 1 of x is pretty close to f of x. Now we find the second order Taylor polynomial to f at x equals 3. Here we have p sub 2 of x is f of 3 plus f prime of 3 times x minus 3 plus the second derivative of f at 3 divided by 2 factorial times x minus 3 squared. And notice that those first two terms just combine to give us p sub 1 of x. So to find p sub 2 of x, we just take p sub 1 of x, add the second derivative of f evaluated at 3 divided by 2 factorial times x minus 3 squared. We've already calculated p sub 1 of x, so pause the video for a moment use that formula for p sub 1 of x plus this formula for p sub 2 of x to figure out exactly what p sub 2 of x is, this second order Taylor polynomial for f centered at x equals 3. And resume the video when you're ready. Now the second order Taylor polynomial p sub 2 of x to f at x equals 3 is p sub 1 of x plus the second derivative of f at 3 divided by 2 factorial times this power, the square of x minus 3. The power and chain rules show that f double prime of x is negative 1 quarter x plus 1 to the negative 3 halves. So f double prime of 3 is negative 1 over 32. This makes p sub 2 of x equal to p sub 1 of x minus 1 over 32 divided by 2 factorial times x minus 3 squared, or 2 plus 1 quarter x minus 3 minus 1 over 64 x minus 3 squared. And again, Notice the powers of x minus 3 that are in this Taylor polynomial. Here's the graph of p sub 2 of x against f of x. And again, as long as we stay close to x equals 3, the second order Taylor polynomial more closely fits the graph of f of x than did the first order Taylor polynomial for f centered at x equals 3. Let's find the third order Taylor polynomial to f at x equals 3. As before, the third order Taylor polynomial to f at x equals 3 is the second order Taylor polynomial to f centered at x equals 3 
plus the third derivative of f at 3 divided by 3 factorial times x minus 3 cubed. And again, you just have to remember these powers of x minus 3. We already found p sub 2 of x. All we have to do is find the third derivative of f at 3 in order to find p sub 3 of x. So go ahead and pause the video for a moment and find a formula for p sub 3 of x centered at x equals 3. And resume the video when you're ready. Again, to find the third order Taylor polynomial for f centered at x equals 3, we already know the second order Taylor polynomial for f centered at x equals 3, so we just need the third derivative of f evaluated at 3. The third derivative of f at x is 3 eighths times x plus 1 to the negative 5 halves, so the third derivative of f evaluated at 3 is 3 over 256. And therefore, p sub 3 of x equals p sub 2 of x plus 3 over 256 divided by 3 factorial times x minus 3 cubed. So p sub 3 of x is 2 plus 1 quarter x minus 3 minus 1 over 64 x minus 3 squared plus 1 over 512 x minus 3 cubed. And again, these are all polynomials in powers of x minus 3. Here's a graph of p3 of x against f of x. Again, we can see that as long as x is close to 3, p sub 3 of x is a pretty good approximation to f of x. Let's repeat this process one more time and find the fourth order Taylor polynomial to f at x equals 3. p sub 4 of x is going to be p sub 3 of x plus the fourth derivative of f evaluated at 3 divided by 4 factorial times x minus 3 to the fourth. Use the formula we found for p sub 3 of x plus this formula for p sub 4 of x to find a formula for p sub 4 of x, the fourth order Taylor polynomial for f centered at x equals 3. Resume the video when you're ready. To find the fourth order Taylor polynomial, p sub 4 of x, we've already found p sub 3 of x, so all we need is the fourth derivative of f evaluated at 3. We can find the fourth derivative of f evaluated at x, which tells us that the fourth derivative of f evaluated at 3 is negative 15 over 2048. This gives us p sub 4 of x is 2 plus 1 quarter x minus 3 minus 164 times x minus 3 squared plus 1 over 512 times x minus 3 cubed minus 5 over 16,384 times x minus 3 to the fourth. Again, it's important to note that these Taylor polynomials are polynomials in powers of x minus 3. Here's the graph of p sub 4 of x against f of x. And again, notice that as long as x is close to 3, p sub 4 of x is a good approximation to f of x. This is why we want to keep p sub 4 of x and all of these Taylor polynomials in powers of x minus 3, because we're interested in what happens when x is close to 3. We can similarly calculate the fifth order Taylor polynomial to f centered at x equals 3, shown here. The sixth order Taylor polynomial to f centered at x equals 3, shown here. And the seventh order Taylor polynomial to f at x equals 3. It would be a good exercise to go and verify these formulas for these fifth, sixth, and seventh order Taylor polynomials for f at x equals 3. If we want to illustrate the increasing accuracy of these Taylor polynomial approximations for x close to 3, let's look at the graphs in succession. Here's the graph of p sub 1 of x versus f of x. Here's p sub 2 of x versus f of x. p sub 3 of x versus f of x. p sub 4 of x. p sub 5 of x. p sub 6 of x. and p sub 7 of x. And we can see that as the order of the Taylor polynomial, the value of n, increases, these Taylor polynomials fit the graph of f better and better for more values of x, extending out from the, the base point x equals 3. Taylor polynomials are used to approximate functions for values of x that are close to the base point. So let's go ahead and use p sub 7 of x to approximate the square root of 5. Pause the video, make this calculation, compare the value that you obtain from the value you get in your calculator to the square root of 5, and then illustrate your approximation on this graph. Resume the video when you're ready. The first thing to notice here is that the square root of 5 is the square root of 4 plus 1. That's just f of 4. 
and we can approximate f of 4 with p sub 7 evaluated at 4. Using our formula for p sub 7 that we found earlier, and evaluating at x equals 4, we get p sub 7 of 4 is this fraction, which has an approximate value of 2.236. When I use my calculator to approximate the square root of 5, I get about 2.236. And so p sub 7 of 4 is a pretty good approximation to the square root of 5. And we can see this on the graph. We have the graph of p sub 7 of x against f of x. And if we evaluate when x is 4, we get this point right here. And you can see that it's really difficult to tell p sub 7 of 4 and f of 4 apart because they're so close together. So to summarize, the nth order Taylor polynomial for a function f centered at x equals a is given by this polynomial expansion in powers of x minus a. And this is the important thing to remember here, is that when we're centering our Taylor polynomials at x equals a, we get a polynomial in powers of x minus a. We use these Taylor polynomials to approximate values of f of x as long as x stays close to a. And as we increase the order, the value of n, our approximations to f of x get better and better, and they get good for more and more values of x in general. And one advantage to using Taylor polynomials centered at points other than the origin is if we want to approximate a function f at some point c, we look for a value of a to center our Taylor polynomials that's near c, and we need that value to be one at which we can evaluate f and all of its derivatives. And that way, we can use typically a smaller value of n in p sub n of c to approximate f of c than if we centered our polynomial, say, at 0. That concludes our screencast on Taylor polynomials centered at points other than the origin. Please come back soon.